Hello, this is Anthony Romrell. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to use GitHub with SourceTree. Now, GitHub is a website that is commonly used to host Git repositories. Now, a repository is a place where you're going to store data, such as code. So, let's get started here. First thing you're going to want to do is create a GitHub account. I've already done that. To do that, you just go to their intro page and you just sign up for GitHub. It's free and you just need to work through a process to register and then receive an email to complete your account. Once that's done, what you'll want to start doing is start with a repo. So right here in this tab, there's a few places you can find get a repo. First under my profile, I can go and check out the re repos I have and you can see your profile, um, different integrations you have and your settings. Um, now, this is the area where we want to use to create a first repo. And we just simply click this button, New Repo. And how it works is that it creates a URL, that's github.com slash your username. My username is here. And then you're going to give it a repository name. So I'll call this one First Repo. First repo. And um, generally what I do is I create a git.ignore file. And you need to pick the language that you're using. So I use a lot of, of Unity and C-sharp, but if you use JavaScript or some kind of other language, you know, you can, you can use that. Or if you're using iOS development, right, you can use, um, you can go through their list or you can create their own git.ignore file. So um, I recommend it if you're using anything specific. So I'm going to say Unity because that's what I use, although it doesn't matter what it is. I'm not going to use a license. I'm going to use a public file so that it, um, by using a public file, it's free. Now, what you want to make sure is that you get a check mark here. If you have a green check mark here, you're good to go. It's, it's not going to like spaces, so it'll actually tell you what the repo will be named as. Um, and if a repository already exists, which it shouldn't because of your username, it'll, it'll put an X. So I'm just going to hit create repo and it'll initialize the repo. Now, there's a couple ways I can get this into source tree. I'm going to show you how to start source tree at this point. Where you're going to want to go is to sourcetreeapp.com. And it should have the platform you're working on here available. You're going to want to download and install source tree. Then I'll show you in this video how to set it up once you've downloaded it. Once you've downloaded the Source Tree app and have it installed, Source Tree is then going to walk you into some through some information about your GitHub account. You're going to want to go through that. If you haven't gone through that and you need some help setting it up, I will show you that now. Now I've hidden my browser and now I'm just focusing on Source Tree. This window right here, if I were to close this, is available here under what's called the repository browser. Now, if you've already set up source tree, you may or may not see some repositories here. In this browser, I can set up different accounts. So I'm going to hit this little sprocket here, and I'm going to go to settings. And in settings, I'm using two remote accounts. If you don't have your accounts listed here, you're going to want to watch this section of the video. If you have them here, then you can skip ahead. But I use two accounts. I use two websites, bitbucket.com and github.com. And um, if you don't have one, you can simply add your account. So I'll go into here and I'll say add an account. You're going to select your host. So in this case, we're going to use GitHub. You're going to want to put in your username, put in the password that you use to create that repository and create that GitHub account. I've already done that, so but if you've done that now, you can you can see that your but your host will appear here, and your accounts will appear here. Once that happens, you can then click on this remote button, and you can then see a list of all of the repositories you've created. So in in for my repositories, the one that I created just a minute ago at the start of this video is this one called Anthony Ramrel slash first repository. Now, if I open my browser back up and go to my GitHub repo, this is the same repository that I've had here, Anthony Romrell slash first repository. And so this now shows the website in this view and in the, re in the remote view in source tree. 
what I'm going to want to do is clone this to my hard drive. So I'm going to hit the clone button and I'm going to figure out where I want this to clone. I have a specific path where I like to put mine. I put my repos in a repo folder. Now if you use a tool like Dropbox, make sure you don't sync these files in Dropbox. Dropbox is also a style of repository and they don't always cooperate. So I do this just on my hard drive outside of something like Dropbox. You don't want to put it in Dropbox or Box.net or Google Drive. It needs to be separated. So it's just a regular folder on my hard drive. I'm then going to create a new folder. I'll call this one first repo and hit create and then I'll hit open and then I can then clone the repository here. Now that this is cloned you can see it has opened a window with my workspace that I can use. Now that I have this open I want you to see how this works in source tree with my finder. Now if you're on Windows it's going to say find an explorer but since I'm on a Mac it's going to say show in finder. If I click this show in finder button it's going to show me the location of my repository. So it's now just opened up a window and here it is and my repository files are here. Since I have no files here it's showing that it is empty. Just the same as the browser is showing here. So what this has done, cloning has done, is it's taken my repository that is on github.com and it has brought the file down. Now git.ignore is here, but you can see that it is hidden in my file structure if I go back to source tree. It does not show my git.ignore file. If I want to modify my git.ignore file, I will go to settings and I will go to advanced and I will then edit the git.ignore file. And here's the things that I had to ignore. We'll talk more about git.ignore files later, but I wanted to show you that this file here is hidden in hid is is here on the server, but it is um, hidden in source tree, and you need to find it in settings. Now we've got to get to the basics of Git. So what does Git do, and why do we use it? Well, Git is is a place where we can store files and store changes to those files. So the main workflow of, of using Git when you have your repo is to create files, stage files, commit those files, push the files to the server, and pull them down to a local repository. So as it starts, we have no files here at all. So we need to add a file in order to get started. I'm just going to use a text file, although generally we script. Like I said, we write things in Unity or JavaScript or Java or whatever language you're using. So I'm going to hit Show in Finder and I'm going to open up this repository's main folder and I'm just going to open text edit and I'm going to put a file in there. So I'm going to launch text edit in Windows. You can launch any app you want. It doesn't have to be a text file. It could be anything. And I'm just going to hit new document and I'm going to make changes to this document. So I'm going to make the text large enough so you can see. So I'm going to type in hello world and then I'm going to save this document. Now where I'm going to save this document is going to be in this repository. So I'm going to go to my repos, first repo, and I'm going to put this document in here and I'm going to call this one doc1 and just hit save. And you can see now that doc1 has been saved in this folder. And if I come here to my GitHub, to my source tree window on my first repo, you can see now that doc1 has appeared in an unstaged area. So one thing to know about how source tree works is it has unstaged file. Staged means something we're going to do with it. Think of it as actually taking a file and putting it on a real stage. If we're putting it on a real stage, then it's going to perform something. So in this case, unstaged means we're not going to do anything with it, but it is available to our repository. Now, when we want to stage something, we can do one of two things to stage it. We can actually just click this unstaged file or click one of the documents, and it's going to drop it up there. The other option is we can just drag this file into the staged area. And now this is available for committing. We will continue on to another video where I'll show you how to then commit, push, and pull.